Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'm gonna turn it over to our presenters. And we are here today in session A6. So first up will be University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Joelle. And good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are safe, healthy, and warm wherever you are tuning in from today. My name is Ali Osterheis. I am the freshman admissions counselor for students coming out of state from the Midwest. And I'm so excited to share a little bit about the University of Minnesota Twin Cities with you today. So welcome and thank you for tuning in. Just a little bit of general information about the University of Minnesota. We are in the Big Ten Conference and we are one of the largest schools in the country with about 53,000 students overall. I will say something really striking about our campus is the sense of campus spirit and pride as well as the sense of community that is alive and well on our campus. We also have the benefit of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul in our backyard. So we do have that traditional Big Ten college campus feel with lots of research opportunities, but also then the benefit of our location, which means you know exploring a really great urban environment and also career opportunities for the future. So let's dive into a few components of this experience at the university you can expect. In terms of academics, we offer both a breadth and a depth in our experience. What I mean by breadth is we have 150 majors, 135 minors. So whatever it is you're interested in studying, we likely have the major for you. We also have our law school, medical school, dentistry, veterinary science, pharmacy, and about 200 graduate and professional programs on our campus too. So your journey as a golden gopher uh, can definitely go beyond the four year undergraduate college experience. We also offer a depth in the academic experience. So that means instead of entering as one of several thousand freshmen on our campus in your freshman year, you will be admitted directly to one of our eight freshman admitting colleges. So this gives you a really you know, close knit sense of community from day one when you start on campus. For example, our School of Nursing, which is our newest freshman admitting college, takes in about 100, 120 freshmen per year. So that's probably smaller than a lot of your high school classes. So you find that really close knit sense of community, but then you have the benefit of a very large university with um, top tier research opportunities, even during your undergraduate years. Um, you'll see too, we have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. This is really great considering our size and our classes do really vary in size. I will say I'm a recent graduate of the university and my smallest class, my senior year in the Spanish department was five students. So you can have a large lecture hall and you can also have some students sitting around a coffee table and that is your class size. In terms of opportunities outside of the classroom, like I said, we're a large campus, so we have almost a thousand student groups, and they range um, in you know pretty much anything you can think of, uh, from the pre dentistry society to the Bob Ross Painting Club. Uh, we've definitely got it all, and we also pay attention to diversity and inclusion on our campus. You'll see we have many cultural centers and student groups as well. In terms of living on campus, you can live in a living learning community. We have about 40 of them embedded within our residential halls, which bring together students who share a common background or interest. For example, we have the biology house for students who are interested in, bi in biology, as well as the lavender house for students of the LGBTQ plus community. So you really can find your niche um, and explore that sense of community on campus. In terms of learning abroad as well, um, about 30 to 40% of our students will go abroad at some point. We have one of the most comprehensive learning abroad programs in the country. So uh, you can definitely kind of pick a place on the globe and we will definitely have opportunities and connections uh, for you to explore beyond campus and beyond the United States. 
like I said, our location is something that really sets us apart in terms of large public research universities. We have 16 Fortune 500 co companies in our backyard in Minneapolis and St. Paul area. Some of those include 3M, Best Buy, General Mills, Medtronic. So you definitely have career opportunities as well as a large alumni network to lean on. We have about 500,000 living alumni uh, gophers around the world who will definitely help with mentorship and, you know, helping out their fellow gophers in their career paths beyond uh, graduation. In terms of things to do around campus, uh, we have six professional sports teams. Uh, you might have heard of like the Minnesota Vikings, the Timberwolves, which is our basketball team, um, as well as many concert venues, places to go check out food from around the world, cultural festivals. There's never really a dull moment. And I will say that something really striking about the Twin Cities is the fact that we're in Minnesota, which is the land of 10,000 lakes. That's what they call it. And um, we have lakes and parks and waterways and lots of greenery embedded into our urban location. So if you want that city environment, but you also like to do things outdoors and take a break of fresh air, a breath of fresh air from that city, we definitely have that experience too. For admissions, I will say our admissions process is very straightforward. We have one application available on our own website. We call it the Golden Gopher application, as well as our common application. Um, you can use either one of those. And all we require is the application form itself, a $55 application fee. There are waivers available to those who qualify and a self-reported academic record. So this is in place of sending us your official high school transcript. You will just send us your grades via inputting them in our online platform. We also do not require an ACT for fall 2022. So for those of you who are juniors, um, you can definitely you know, totally have the option in terms of test score. So to wrap up, you'll see at the bottom of the screen here, I'll put my contact information in at the end of this presentation here today, but I'd really encourage you to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear how your college search is going and help you learn more about the University of Minnesota. Thank you. All right, so next we'll hear from Creighton University. Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Abby Marish. I work with students from Nebraska and a couple of other states around the US, including Texas and Hawaii. Um, but I will get started uh, with my presentation today on Creighton. So you can see a few pictures from around campus to get started. Um, but diving right in, Creighton, we are a Jesuit Catholic institution. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities to grow in your faith while here and also having that reflective mindset. Um, we're also a liberal arts institution, so that means we have a lot of different academic programs that you can look into. Um, we're really strong in the health sciences, our direct entry nursing program, as well as business. Um, but 140 academic programs gives you that flexibility. We are a mid-sized institution as well, so we have about 4,400 undergraduates. And we're very comprehensive for our size in terms of academic programs and pre-health and pre-professional advising. Um, at Creighton as well, you still get that personalized experience. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty. Your average class is going to be about 23 to 24 students. And we get, do get students from all 50 states. About 80% of our students at Creighton will come from outside of Nebraska. At Creighton, we have three undergraduate colleges, the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hyder College of Business, and the College of Nursing. Um, that is a direct entry nursing program as well. So we'll take about 120 to 150 students a year. Um, and then we have all of these different professional and graduate level programs on campus as well. At Creighton, if you decide to go for undergrad and then continue your education, you do get preference into our different professional school programs as well. So good benefit there. All right, and then I talked a little bit about the, that pre-professional advising that starts right away freshman year. You can get involved with one of our pre-health or pre-law courses. Um, there's a lot of support with academic success, free tutoring, um, and then we do have a career center as well. So um, at Creighton, you're really lucky to have opportunities for internships. Last year, our Jobs for Jays board had over 6,000 full-time job and internships for students to look through. And Omaha is the number one city in America for paid internships. Um, for our business students, we don't have classes on Fridays. The goal of that is so that they can do a full internship every single Friday as well. Uh, so good opportunities across the board. Um, that leads to our 99% success rate. So uh, this is a great opportunity to see what students will do with their, their Creighton degree. 
Um, so you can see it looks a little bit different across colleges, um, but these students are employed within six months of graduation within their field of interest. They're attending graduate or professional school or they're doing a full time service program. So we can prepare you for whatever your next step is um, after you leave. That's really how we measure our success at Creighton. You wonder where you stack up with the uh, freshman class at Creighton. Here's some statistics about our middle 50%. Creighton is a test optional institution as well. So if you feel like your high school GPA is a better predictor of your academic success, you're not required to submit that test score for admission or scholarships. Um, but feel free uh, to ask your admissions counselor at Creighton. I'll put up a slide with their contact information at the end. Um, if you do have some more questions about uh, you know, how you'd fit in there, but there's about 230 different clubs and activities you can get involved with uh, while you're on Creighton's campus. So everything from traditional fraternity and sorority life, campus ministry, um, different cultural organizations, intramurals, club sports, um, some major clubs, so like Spanish club, math club, bio club, um, just about everything for every student across campus. A big involvement on campus is service work. It's not a requirement at Creighton, but as a university, we did over a million hours of community service last year. So definitely something our students have really taken advantage of and it's become more of a part of the culture of Creighton. All right, another big activity our students love to attend are different athletic events across campus. We are a D1 university um, and we play in the Big East Conference. This is a picture from a basketball game pre-COVID times, of course, but our students get free admission to all of our different athletic events. So men's basketball, we've been ranked as high as sixth this year. Uh, and then women's volleyball, we're currently ranked 19th as well. So some really ac athletically and uh, academically competitive programs that you can get involved with here. Okay, and then our location is another big part of Creighton. We're located right in downtown Omaha. So you, you get a feel that, you know, it's still a college campus. It's still very walkable, but just in our backyard are some of these different fun uh, neighborhoods that you can check out. As I mentioned, we're the number one city in America for paid internships. We're a top city for college graduates. Well, half of our grads decide to stay in Omaha post-graduation. Twin Cities area, Chicago, Kansas City, those are all big placement cities for us as well. Um, as a student, you'll have access to four Fortune 500 companies within two miles of campus. We're also the home of the College World Series, the number, series, the number one zoo in the world. Um, and then if you're a music fan, we're an up and coming music city as well. So. A lot of good stuff you can check out right near campus. Um, and then I did want to include my contact information. So if you guys do have questions after this presentation, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, and then we have a whole team of admissions counselors as well. So um, if you're from a different area, feel free to reach out to your individual counselor. And then I will let uh, our next presentation jump in. All right, so next we'll hear from Columbia College Chicago. Thanks so much. All right, hello everyone. Good afternoon. So excited to be here uh, and chatting with you today. My name is Stephen Barnes. My pronouns are he, him, and I am the admission counselor at Columbia College Chicago for students coming from the Midwest. So I really look forward to hopefully hearing from you soon. Um, by way of introduction, Columbia College Chicago is a mid-size institution based in the heart of downtown Chicago, the third largest city in the country, um, that has a blend of the liberal arts and sciences, the creative arts, and business. So we are a creatively focused institution with over 60 majors in the creative industries to offer. Um, as I mentioned, we are mid-size, about 7,000 students total. And uh, each year we bring in a new class of freshmen and transfer students, about 1,700 uh, new students each year. Although we are based in downtown Chicago, we are not a commuter institution. 71% of our new uh, students each year are living on campus in one of our apartment or suite style buildings um, and developing that community of creatives that we uh, are really are proud of. Um, also, I love to highlight the diversity of our student body, which really comes in all forms, but first and foremost, 42% of our students identify as students of color. Uh, about a third of our students identify with the LGBTQIA community. Uh, we've got students from all 50 states. Our international students come from 60 different countries. So it's just this beautiful community of diverse, interesting folks with different life experiences who are coming together to create um, and learn and collaborate across these different disciplines um, 
that they're passionate about. And then also just a quick highlight of our average GPA, which is about a 3.34 currently. We are a test optional institution. And so uh, it is definitely up to you to decide what best represents you in our admission process. Um, I think one of the hallmarks of a Columbia education is the fact that you are going to dive into your intended area of study right away from day one. So although you will be blending your creative pursuits with the liberal arts and science requirements and with some um, business and industry focus, you are gonna be able to start right off studying film or acting or graphic design or fashion or whatever it might be um, from day one. You're gonna be in small class sizes with the average being uh, under 19 in, in recent years. And also, I think one of the coolest parts is that the faculty are industry professionals who are still actively working within their field and bringing that uh, expertise and industry knowledge into the classroom, providing our students with direct opportunities for hands-on learning, practicums, internships, et cetera. Um, so you're gonna be learning from some of the best in the best. Um, as I mentioned, we do have over 60 majors and programs to offer. This is by no means the full list. So I encourage you to go to column.edu slash majors for more info. But generally speaking, our majors fall into sort of these four buckets, audio communication and writing, media arts, performing arts, and then visual arts and business. And we do allow, um, and depending on what your major is, we do allow some uh, double majoring or major and minoring so that students can kind of blend those various interests that they tend to have. Um, apart from living in the third largest city in the country and having some amazing cultural uh, opportunities within the city to take advantage of, not to mention amazing neighborhoods and restaurants, et cetera, um, on campus, we do have over 40, or I'm sorry, over 70 student clubs and organizations to get involved in. So though we are not your typical school with collegiate athletics and things like that, we do have club sports in addition to various creative pursuits, um, you know, religious organizations, community-based organizations, cultural organizations, um, and things of that nature. Student leadership is another big piece of that. And then on campus, we have hundreds of events throughout the year. So just imagine this, you are in a community of students who are all pursuing various creative industries. Within any given week, you're gonna have a friend who's got a show that they're performing in, who's gonna have a gallery opening, who's gonna be debuting a video game they've been working on that they now need students to try out. Those are the types of uh, activities and events happening all throughout the year. And then finally, our residence centers are definitely designed with the creative student in mind. Um, our application process can vary a little bit depending on the type of program you're applying for. And so you can reach out to me for more info. But the thing I really wanna highlight is that we have a strong commitment to financial aid. So no matter what program you're applying to, you have ample opportunity for financial aid to make Columbia a reality for you. In order to maximize your possibility for aid at Columbia, basically you wanna take three steps. Step one is simply applying for admission so that we consider you for merit scholarship. Step two is filling out the FAFSA so we can consider you for need-based aid, which includes need-based scholarship from Columbia. So even if you may not be eligible for need-based aid with the FAFSA at other institutions, at Columbia, you're likely to at least get a minimum need-based scholarship simply for filling out the FAFSA. And then finally, submitting a portfolio or audition. For our Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Music programs, this is a requirement, and then you'll be considered for a talent-based scholarship with that. And then for our Bachelor of Arts programs, it is optional to submit a portfolio or audition to be considered for that talent-based scholarship. All told, 97% of freshmen and 96% of transfer students receive aid with a really high average financial aid package. So here is my information. I welcome you to reach out to me. I will also drop my email in the chat. And then you can see all of our various uh, social media there at the bottom. We are Columb at MIT uh, across the board. So find us online. And I really, really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. All right, and next we'll hear from Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Thank you. Just one moment, bear with me, please.
So we are Kansas City, Kansas Community College. I'm Mariah Erickson, one of the admissions coordinators here. So we are a com community college here in Kansas City, Kansas. So we're a public, urban, open door, comprehensive community college, meaning we have both technical programs here at our school and academic programs. We are a public school and we do have an open admissions policy. So anyone that does apply to our school will receive an admittance to it. And we are urban. We are both in Kansas City, Kansas, which is a pretty urban area. And then we're also right next to Kansas City, Missouri, which is a large area with lots of opportunities for internships and other opportunities in our community. So we have about 100 different degree programs here. We have a couple transfer pathways, which are things that you're gonna do here at our school and then transfer on to a four-year university. And we'll get you set up so that you can do that in a timely manner. And then we have some career pathways so you can get your associate's degree from us and then you can also get a technical cer certificate. And we have those ranging from all different programs and all different lengths of time. So our shortest program is gonna be a four month program. And that's our nail technology program. And our longest one is our nursing program, which is about a three and a half year program. So we're really excited to offer a bunch of different opportunities to all members of our community and anyone else. So tuition varies here a little bit, but for the most part, it stays about under $100 per credit hour. We do have in-state county rates, but most importantly, we have online rates that start at $88 a credit hour. So anyone in any of America at all could take that online virtual rate for $88 a credit hour, which is a really nice opportunity for education. We have a bunch of different student resources here on our campus, such as a learning commons, a student success center, counseling and advocacy, student accessibility and support services, military and veterans, intercultural. So we really just wanna emphasize how diverse our community here is in Kansas City, Kansas. We are the second most diverse school in the state of Kansas. We're the most diverse public school in the state of Kansas. So you're always gonna find different people here on our campus and different organizations that really highlight and reflect on those organizations. We have over 40 clubs and organizations of special interest group ranging from our Mortuary Science Club, which is a huge hit here at our school. We also have our Gamers Club. We have our Yarn Club. We have basically something for everyone. And we really want to encourage students, even though that we're a community college, they can still get involved here on our campus. We have athletics. We have basketball, baseball, golf, soccer for men. We have women's basketball, soccer, softball, and volleyball. A lot of our athletes stay here on our campus because we do have housing here on our campus and we really like to encourage our students to get out and support them. We have six easy steps to enrollment. So we have a free online application on our website, kcpc.edu. We do encourage almost all programs to take an AccuPlacer test on our campus, which is just a test we provide to make sure you're in the right class for you. We do not require an ACT score here at our campus. However, we can use that along with your GPA and transcripts to set you up in the right classes for you. So we really wanna make sure everyone's in the correct class for them and starts where they need to start. We are currently enrolling for the summer semester and also our fall semester, and we will take applicants pretty close up to the first day of classes. So anyone is welcome to apply. My name is Mariah Erickson. I am the admissions coordinator here at Kansas City, Kansas Community College, along with a few others. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. All right, and our final presentation for this 656 is from the University of Melbourne, and then we'll have a few questions for our panelists. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Julia. Um, I'm with the University of Melbourne, based in Melbourne, Australia. Sorry, just a second. Um, so one of the great things um, about our degrees is that all of our bachelor degrees in Australia are actually only three years um, and a lot of really excellent universities. So we're um, a large public research intensive university. Um, and one of the best things about going to Australia is you actually get to live in Australia um, and you can stay in Australia for um, two years after your degree. Um, we're actually ranked number one in Australia and we're ranked 26 in the world. So we're sort of an Australian equivalent of an Ivy League institution um, at a considerably cheaper price. Um, so we have all sorts of different programs. And as you can see, a lot of these are actually ranked in the top 20 in the world. Um, so we have everything, you know, from the humanities to biomedicine. Um, these are just a list of our majors. Um, design, fine arts, 
music. Um, one of the, the point of differences is that um, you basically will just apply directly to the program. Um, you don't have to choose your major until later on, um, but you do have to have an, a general idea of what you want to study. Um, very easy application, um, basically just your transcript and standardized test scores um, and pretty transparent um, entry requirements. So if you do meet the minimum requirements, most likely you will get an offer. Uh, you can kind of get an idea um, of what we are looking for. You know, if you want to study communications, you'd apply for a Bachelor of Arts and you would need a 3.2 or, or SAT of 1320 um, and then AP prerequisites. Um, we also do accept the IB diploma um, and where we have test alternatives um, for 2021. So you can do an online stat test or you can apply with AP aggregate. Um, and I am happy to discuss this with in further detail. Um, if you reach out, I can pop my, my email in the chat later on. Um, the seasons are a little different down under. So SEM 1 is March to June and SEM 2 is July to November. Um, so that means that you can start either semester, um, but the seasons are opposite. So um, if you start in July, that's um, winter in Australia. So um, tuition actually can be quite affordable um, at a lot of international schools. So we're actually often pretty comparable to an in-state um, option. So again, our degrees are only three years with no impacted majors. So um, you're getting out into the workforce sooner um, and you're spending, um, you're only spending tuition for three years rather than four. Um, we are really proud to rank um, seven in the world for graduate employability. Um, we have um, all sorts of support for students throughout their degree and after. Um, we also do have a really extensive um, alumni network throughout the world. Um, so if you want to connect with people back in the States or if you want to live overseas and work, you could do that as well. A lot of um, options for internships, um, a lot of undergraduate research as well. Um, we're right next to the, the Melbourne Biomedical Precinct, um, and that's where a lot of really cutting edge um, research is happening. Um, we were the first to map out the coronavirus outside of China, so that will help, that helped, you know, vaccine research um, and so on. So this is where our campus is. Um, Melbourne is a really amazing city. Um, it was ranked the most livable city in the world for seven years in a row. So tons of stuff to do. And again, this is campus. So we're only about 15, 20 minutes walk from, from downtown. And it's a very walkable, bikeable city. Um, we are one of the oldest universities in Australia. We've been around since 1853. So we have all sorts of beautiful old buildings. Um, so it does definitely have a separate campus vibe as well. And lots of clubs, activities for students um, to get involved with um, and modern facilities as well as the beautiful old buildings. Um, our faculty to student ratio is quite good. Um, so it's about 12 to one, um, which is quite good for, you know, a large university that has about 50,000 students. Um, Melbourne is quite famous for laneway cafes um, and there are more um, restaurants, cafes and live music venues than any other city per capita than any other city in the world. So lots and lots of things to do. Um, and culturally, there's a lot of similarities between Australia and the US. Um, so it's a really great experience. And Melbourne's quite known for the street art and um, the bustling kind of downtown life. Um, the 12 Apostles is actually only about um, an hour from campus, so you can see kangaroos and koalas um, pretty easily if you'd like to. 
And we're only about 30, 40 minutes away from our beach communities. Um, and I'm the local rep um, for the US and Canada. So I'm always happy to, um, to connect with, with students um, for one-on-one -on -one chats and so on. So thanks very much. All right, and thank you to our presenters. Um, so now with the last few minutes, I'm going to ask all of our presenters to turn their videos back on and we'll just go in presentation order and we have a few general questions for you. Um, so first up, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? I'll hop in first. Uh, that's a great question. I think my biggest piece of advice is talk to current students. They are the best resource that you can get great, you know, real information about the campus experience from. And they're, even though a lot of campuses aren't able to do their full in-person tours at this point, there's still lots of ways to connect virtually with current students and really, you know, get at, you know, what they like about their experience and um, what kind of advice they have for you too. So I would say ask lots of questions and um, there, you'll find lots of ways to connect with, with students and they love to talk to you too. Right. Like Ali said, uh, students are a great resource for you to reach out and learn more about the institution. I'd also recommend connecting with your admissions counselor. So um, all of the professionals on this video know a lot about the schools that they're representing. Feel free to reach out and ask about a major you're interested in. See if they have a club that you want to join. Um, we want to connect with you. Uh, and I think that's something that, that high school students might be a little nervous about. And that's okay. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email or request a meeting. We'd love to chat. All right, so I'll chime in from the sort of uh, art school perspective. If you are a student who's thinking about, um, you know, pursuing your creative passions, I would definitely encourage you to be giving some thought to why do you love the things you love? Why do you want to create the type of work that you want to create? Um, and just start thinking about how to articulate that, because that's the type of thing you'll talk about in personal statements or in an audition or in an interview. Um, not just at Columbia, but with any art school, um, and start thinking about the work that you've already created. What are some pieces you might be interested in highlighting, or what are some ideas you've had that you haven't had time to work on yet that maybe you could start working on the rest of this year, this summer, the first part of your senior year, so that you have some concrete pieces to share with us that also um, represent you and, and your creative passion. So start thinking about those things if you haven't already. I would love to add um, following any of the colleges on social media, whether that be any of the parts of them. I know personally I have an admissions page and I share things from the college and from our student senate. So you'll get to know about things that are welcome to all students who are available to come to any part of those activities and for students specifically looking to be in admissions. Hi, um, so I would say my um, advice for students that are doing the college search is really think outside the box. Um, and I think, you know, you know, just just because your friends are doing a certain thing doesn't mean that that's necessarily the best choice for you. Um, I'd really encourage you to think about international options. They can actually be um, very affordable in many cases, um, and you can use U.S. student loans. All right, and our next question for the panelists is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Yeah, I will say at the University of Minnesota, we have many traditions, but one of my favorites is Paint the Bridge Day. It happens every fall, usually at the beginning of October, and we have a covering on our bridge. It's the Washington Avenue Bridge that spans from the East Bank to the West Bank of the Mississippi River. On this bridge covering, there are panels along the entire inside and every one of our, you know, 900 plus student groups is able to paint one of the panels with information, uh, lots of really artistic panels as well. So um, if you're ever bored on campus, that's a really great way to get involved and just see the diverse array of student groups that we have every year. My favorite tradition at Creighton University is called Christmas at Creighton. So everyone gathers out front in front of the church at St. John's. Um, and then our president does a little, little speech. Uh, and then we turn down all the lights and then we turn everything back on and the entire 
campus is lit up in, in blue and all these fun Christmas lights. So, and then it follows with a, a huge feast. So every, everyone comes for the food, of course, but uh, that's my personal favorite tradition. Uh, it's welcome to students of all faith backgrounds, not just Catholic students as well. Uh, this is an easy one for me and I love it. So we have a, a really great tradition at the end of every school year called Manifest, which is an urban arts festival. Um, so it's, it's a big street fest uh, right in the neighborhood where we are in downtown Chicago. And the purpose of the festival is to celebrate the work of our, our graduating students primarily. So it's got three main stage uh, stages where we have various music and dance and other performances from our students, gallery openings, um, new video game debuts uh, and other just events throughout the day. Um, and there is a competition every year for one of our students to write an original song that the students vote on and then it is used in the video of all the highlight reel of the performances from that week. So it's a really, really fun tradition uh, that highlights our student work. My favorite event that happens on campus is our org fair. We have it in the fall and in the spring. However, it was a little different this year with COVID, but typically we bring in food trucks and all the organizations get to set up. And with community colleges, people typically don't feel as involved. So it's a great way for all those commuter students to feel like they can still have a place on our campus. Um, so one of the things that I think is really cool um, is that we have a sort of a different system of accommodation. So instead of a dorm, we have a residential college. So there's quite a bit of community there. And um, basically it's um, the, the different residential colleges like play sports with one another and they have all sorts of activities. Um, and on Friday nights, they have these special dinners where they wear these um, sort of like capes, like a Harry Potter kind of cape. Um, so it's a really cool way um, of making friends and kind of building a community um, when you're in a different country. All right. And our final question for our panelists before we wrap up is give us an interesting or fun fact about your school. Great. I will say my favorite fun fact about the University of Minnesota and one of our claims to fame is the invention of the Honeycrisp apple, which I argue is the most delicious and tasty apple every fall. It was developed on our College of Food, Agriculture, and Natural Resource Sciences area of campus in St. Paul, and we continue to develop more species of apple. And the great thing is our St. Paul part of campus is adjacent to the Minnesota State Fairgrounds, which is the second largest state fair in the country behind Texas. And a lot of times they offer tastings and samplings of the newest apples every year. Right, one of my favorite facts about Creighton is we have the largest luau where you can't see the uh, Pacific Ocean, which is really interesting. We get about 70 students a year from Hawaii. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy to work with those students. And I always encourage uh, my students from outside of the islands to attend the luau. So uh, they fly in a chef from Hawaii, he makes like poke and sushi. It's a ton of fun. So um, that's one of my favorite uh, fun facts about Creighton is uh, the big uh, Hawaiian influence you'll see across campus. I'll have to time one of my Nebraska recruitment trips to come check that out. Uh, so um, at Columbia, we have the, this is just, I think it's interesting. We have the number one program in the country for comedy writing and performance. And one of the partnerships that we have is with Second City, which is one of the premier improv uh, clubs in the country. And uh, so we have a semester at Second City that students can do in that program. And one of our alums from that program is A.D. Bryant, who is a current cast member on Saturday Night Live. That is so cool. As a community college and a trade school, we have different construction technology, welding, nail technology, and cosmetology. And those are actual full functioning organizations within our trade school. So students can actually go get their hair done by different people in our school. The welding students can go over to the nail salon and get their nails done. People can have their cars worked on by our students. So we offer a lot of hands-on opportunities for our students. And it's really great for staff as well, because then we can loan out things like our offices for the walls to be reconstructed by the construction students. So it's really great to see the actual work on campus being done. 
So I guess for a fun fact, we have um, quite a famous um, parking lot called a car park in Australia, um, and it was actually filmed in the Mad Max um, movie, and it was like it's had like fashion shows and um, Top Chef film there. So that's kind of a kind of a cool thing about our university. All right. Well, with that, since we just had five schools instead of six presenting today, we will wrap up a couple minutes early. So I want to say thank you to all of the presenters and all of the attendees who joined us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted and there's another one starting in just about 20 minutes. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at the same website where you registered. So thank you again to everybody who joined us today. Thank you to the panelists. I'm sure I'll see a few of the attendees in just a couple of minutes. And to everybody else, have a great day.